back in real life. I mean, you don't know their relationship. I mean, the fact that they, they oh, made was nine a good movies. Relationship, but... they, they did nine movies over 25 years together. Mm. So obviously they really enjoyed one another's yep. company a lot. Yep. And worked really well together. Yep. I mean... She does not find this a favourite. And the thing is, he died 17 days after the end of it. Now, by the stage that they were filming that, uh, she was essentially living with him and caring for him uh, because he was so weak by that stage of the game. What what was wrong with him? Uh, Heart failure in the end. Okay. Um, But, like, he was, like, it was so much strength. He still did a great job in the film, though. You wouldn't have known. You would not have known. I mean, and that's the strength of character for mm. him. You know, that shows he just just got on with it. True, true, true professional. Again, another aspect of why you have to respect the film. But you see occasionally where she knows she's, he's dying and he's on his last legs and they're filming this stuff and you're seeing this unbridled love between this woman for her you know, the man of her life. And she never got involved in a relationship after him or no, anything like that. It was didn't. that was that was it for her. Um her eyes I I'd go to say her eyes were sparkly as in watery for the, nearly the whole film. I think she was just about crying the whole way through it, you know, but and holding back the tears. But the way they acted together, I mean yeah. their relationship yeah. even though it's sort of also you know, yeah. you're looking at um Sydney Poiter's and you know, Doctor John's yeah. And, people and didn't know. Joanna. The, people didn't know at the time. She only let people know about it after the wife of Spencer Tracy died. Mm. So you know that was old school. They don't come out and put it on Twitter like twenty four <laughs> hours afterwards or anything like that nowadays. You know, so she didn't hurt the wife uh, because she knew that Spencer was caught in uh, a relationship where he was. He still loved his wife, but I think he loved her more you know what I mean like he was I mean sometimes you can love someone but it's because it's not uh, as in you know your relationship changes Mm. I mean he had children with her and everything so they had a lot of things in common but the life might have changed and therefore it might have blossomed with um Catherine Hepburn and they obviously really enjoyed each other's company they were working a lot together and exclusively mm. so no I take that I, I just look I love the I just love those little glances the whole way through it. And they were there the whole way through it. And when you know to look for them, you know, and you just, there's occasionally you just see her looking at him mm. and you can just see that her heart's breaking while she's doing this and she's oh, doing it professionally she's, and she's acting, you know. Yeah, it's oh, just, it, was, it, was, it was done yeah. really well. I, That's why I sob like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so putting all that to one side, so that's just an interesting little sideline of it, but... Having known that, it just makes this movie something special. And you might watch special. the film differently yes. if you know this information. Yes, and that's why I put it up there for people to, mm. to, to digest. I, I tried not to think about that. I wanted to look at it solely no, you for wouldn't. what it was. you wouldn't have thought about it. And you didn't. No. No, because you're not that person. <laughs> I like to watch it for what it is rather than the background <laughs> stuff, if I can help it. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> um, there's only a couple of little things that bothered me. Yep. Um... There's one big thing that bothered me, but you do yours first. Okay, mine were just looking at the relationships, like of Dr. Pentis and his father. Mm-hmm. I found there was no resolution there. I know he wasn't a main character, his father. Yep. But I found I would have liked enclosure, uh, like, liked closure there, sorry, enclosure. <laughs> liked closure there, and I found Tilly. Yep. I wanted closure there too. I mean, yeah, they're accepting him, but I mean, then surely they have to start taking a broader look at everything mm. so I mean I mean that could always be future but it, you know it always it was a hard a night bit. for everybody yeah I know I'm yeah. just, it bugged me a little bit <laughs> yeah um, um, but... I loved um, Sydney po- first of all oh. Sydney Poitier mm, no, Portier is it is that how you pronounce it my apologies Sydney Portier sorry yeah yeah, well, that's how he pronounced it. So, okay, well, yeah, then he'd yeah. be right. He knows his own name. <laughs> he'd be on the money, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, first of all, the man is a legend. Oh, he's awesome. He's just a fucking legend. You know, that's uh, he's just as good as it gets. Mm-hmm. And there are so few people that I can think that bring this massive dignity and gravitas to a role that he can. Maybe Lawrence of Libya. 
Maybe. Uh, Maybe. No, Marlon no, no, Brando no. in his later years, perhaps. Uh, but there's very few that have that force of character. And no. he's so young when he's doing that. And that's, you know, and that's, he should have had a far bigger career. He should have dominated Hollywood. But, of course, he's black, so... He's, I kept having to remind myself that because I was like, oh, yeah, oh, he's, he's a good-looking superb. guy. He can act. He's got a great voice and yeah. great presence on, just, the, you know. It, it's just... You can see that the man is just a magnificent human being, mm. you know, and I imagine he's had his hard run through life as as much as any other coloured person that, you know. Mm. Well, you just don't know what, they're, what they've come up against, what sort of racism or prejudice that they've right. had to deal with. So... Mm. And to have that kind of dignity, I would imagine he's he's had a fair chop of it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, clap, 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 clap for him. No, he did a great job. His character's mother. I mean, I forgot how good she was. Well, at first you don't she even. Had me... <laughs> no, but the thing is, you don't. I don't. I didn't even acknowledge her when she first walked in. I thought, oh, no, she's so quiet. She's like so this mouse, quiet and then and... she just, <laughs> you know, just cuts open your well, that's heart what I mean. and pulls out. She your... had lots. Going for her, and I thought, oh, this yeah. is great. I'm just waiting for him. And when he's yelling at his dad, I was waiting for something to happen there, and it didn't yep. go anywhere. And I'm like, yeah. oh. Uh, the Spencer Tracy uh, speech when she's just, you know, just gutting him, you know. Yes. Oh, just like, and I could just, in the back of my mind, I just heard you going, testify, sister. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she did such a great job. I'm thinking, oh, wow, what mm. insight. This is wonderful. Whoever's yep. written this has done such a wonderful job. It's a very well put together film, isn't it? Yes. Mm. And I mean, the fact that even though it's however many years old it is that's why I wanted to put it forward what, 51 years old I can't think of a film that's as good because even the pacing is good but when mm. people will sit down and watch this film they're not watching a film they're watching a play mm. it's essentially it's a like series that, yeah. of conversations you there's know. nothing wrong with that I think no, it's good no. um, I actually like the music the way the music went yeah, except for one piece go on do we remember the two idiots go-go dancing from the doorway? <laughs> I was screaming at the TV. I'm going, no, oh, get this shit off. But they were trying to make it uh, applicable to the people that, who was watching it at the time. And at that time, it was 1967 go-go dancers, you know. And that's, that's the culture that they were appealing to. And, oh, my God, that didn't age well <laughs> <laughs> at all. No, I just... I found, because they were sort of playing the one piece of music, The Glory of Love, mm. and at first it's all happiness and love and gooey, yep. and then it actually takes on minor chords and starts being very menacing and you're yep. worried for the characters, and I thought the way they kept the same song going, but they would change it slightly, oh, is there slight happiness now? No, it's going down, and I like the way you're it does really it. really starting to... No, I like when they do that because yeah. it's helped directing your mood and I love that about films. Mm. I like being able to sit there and have someone drag me through it all yep. and not yep. have to worry about it. You don't have to do the thinking. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so... But it, it was only one, basically one piece of music through the whole so, uh, through the whole show, yep. Yep. movie, sorry. Very, and um, they just kept changing the it and yep. I love that. Yep. So. Yeah, they did a superb job on it, except for the go-go dancing part of it. <laughs> Which, you know, whoever did that, that was clearly done for money. Mm. You know, because some Hollywood executive would have gone, well, I think they ought to have some go-go dancing because statistics say the demographics would very, very much appeal to this. You could just hear the guy wanking on and everybody else is just going, it's going to ruin this film. But, you know, the executive got his way. Well done, him. <laughs> Ugh, rolled eyes, people. Um... So, how many stars would you give it? Oh, I have to come out first. Yep. Oh! <laughs> I deserve it because I'm the one who picked it. Yep. Now, I, you I'm, really need to give this more thought beforehand, don't you? No, no well, I, as I said, I he rely heavily oh, on oh, where you go. Oh, don't rely go. heavily on me. I mean, still... I do, of course. Do you have any idea before you come in here? Well, it's called respecting your opinion. Oh, well, I mean... Everyone respects that fucked my it, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to go from that. I can't argue with that. The door. <laughs> well, so many people respect. <laughs> well, my opinion. fuck. He's got me now. <laughs> um, look, I think that's twice you've done that now. Yeah, I know. Is, that, is that your thinking sound? Well, I think it might be. Everyone's got thinking music. You've got <laughs> raspberries. <laughs> Do, I do, 
think I have to give it an eight. I have to give it an eight. And I'll, I'll, let me explain a little bit my processes here. And it possibly might shift to a seven, but I'll, look, I'll hold it at a tentative eight at this stage of the game. For the simple fact, the film is ancient. 1967. And like, you know, Herbie the Love Bug was getting around. This, is, this was a competition. It was... It changed America. This is why it's getting so... What did it... Again, what did it set out to achieve? To make people understand a little bit more and have a little bit more think about their own relationship with racism and prejudice? Yes, we know that. And I think it is a superb job on that. Mm. So much so that 50 years down the track, it still smacks your fair in the chops. Mm. So... You have to give that a 10. So it's hitting way above its weight there. Was it entertaining? Did you find it entertaining? Yes, I did. I found it enormously entertaining. I found it emotionally um, just so powerful. Um, I reacted to it. I was involved with it, you know, from way to go, taking the go-go dancing to one side because I was just enraged. Did it really damage you that much? I was enraged. <laughs> I was just go fuck. <laughs> it was just so painful. I like other people might like go go dancing. I don't it know. It didn't but, bother me. But it was the idiotic, you know, the dancing, and it. it was so over the top because everything else is. Think about it. The whole film is super subtle. Okay, they put people in an incredibly impossible position. They put a time limit on it. They put the lid on and they pressure cook it. And then they bring in extra stuff, bring in the other parents as well. You know, the pressure keeps building and building and building. And I guess that they must have used this, well, well, now we need a light moment, you know. So let's just have two idiots just go, go dance out to the car. And so they didn't need to do that. I say keep that fucking lid on. Keep it on, keep it cooking, keep the pressure going. I actually thought it was interesting because he was a white boy and she wasn't. Oh, I yeah, think. I know, I know. And I'm sure idea. that was part of... But did it have to happen? Um, it no. Didn't, didn't, it didn't distract from the... I, you know, it's not on my list of things I didn't like about the film. Yeah, again, you're, you're a very generous person. So I'll leave that alone. <laughs> the go-go dancing, I'll just set it as an anomaly and just put it to one I'm side. I'm so going to pick a, another film with oh, go-go dancing. Ooh, yeah. Oh, we, Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah! <laughs> so you're sticking with eight. I think so. I, I think so. Yes, I, I think I'll, def, I'll. This is the hill I want to die on. I'm going to defend this spot. Um, do I hear something funny? What? I give it an eight too. Yay! <laughs> That's the first, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. Handshake. I, there you go. Boom, boom. Um, no, I thought it was really. It was done well. Yep. And I, you know, I really wanted everything to work out. You're, in, you know, you're invested. You're enjoying it. Um, yeah. Makes you think. It's got to move me f- before I give it a high score. And a lot of films don't because I'm such a cynical fuck. <laughs> Says he who was crying at the TV. I am cynical. You know I'm a cynical person. You keep telling everybody. Go on. I'm cynical, people. <laughs> I'm dark. <laughs> All right, let's go and watch Teen Titans. <laughs> By the way, by the way, kids, if you haven't seen Teen Titans. Oh, God. No, seriously, it's great. It's great. Um, I love if it. you've got four year olds, yes. yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, but um, better than Paw Patrol. Anyway, that's not what we're discussing. Four year olds shouldn't be watching Teen Titans. It is called Teen Titans. I don't think that matters. No. Anyway, so well, there you go. We've done our two films. We do, and oh my god, we got in under an hour. Hooray! Huzzah! <laughs> For everyone else. <laughs> Um, so what have we got next? Next week is our obscure and your one of your favourites. Now, I'll be honest. I'll put a disclaimer in here. I picked this one, not so much because it's one of my favourite favourites, but I wanted to share it with people and have a bit of a talk about it. Um, because I think it's my favourite for this year. Can I say that? You can say that. It's the strongest film I've seen this year. Okay. So our obscure film is The Four Feathers. Yes. Neither of us know anything about no, this we one at all. we haven't seen it. It's got Heath Ledger in it. And I looked at it and went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you looked at it and you went, huh? Oh, it had Heath Ledger. And they're wearing pith helmets. So well, they 
ticks boxes for you, doesn't it? Well, it's historical and off to Africa we go.